Dear friends, and welcome to this evening of Praying with the Psalms. Well, Psalms are beautiful prayers which reflect the prayers that are deep down from our hearts. Psalms are very strongly Jewish prayers and Jesus, as a good Jew, would have prayed these Psalms all through his life. I would like to bring it to you from instances in the Bible where Psalm was prayed always. Of all the books in the Old Testament, the Psalm is the most quoted book from the Old Testament. Not even the law, not even the Torah. We see the Psalms being quoted all the more throughout the Bible. We see that Jesus on his Passover after the meal, when they were preparing to go to Mount Olives, they sing the Psalms. And it was usually Psalm 113 to 14 and 15 uh, to 118 that was sung at the end of the Passover. So probably they prayed Psalm 118 before they went to the Mount of Olives to prepare for his passion. Jesus, even on the cross, he prays the psalm. Psalm 22, verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. And that shows how much the psalm was ingrained in a Jew. We see Jesus, after he appears, to his disciples in the upper room where Thomas is missing. Jesus explains to them from the law, the prophets and the Psalms that he is the promised one. We see this in Luke chapter 24 verses 44. We see again in Acts chapter 1 verses 20 when the disciples were gathered in the upper room to choose someone else in the place of Judas, they pray the Psalms as a prayer of discernment before they could choose the other one. We see again in Acts chapter 2 verses 25 to 35, uh, soon after the Pentecost, when they are filled with the Spirit and they go out to proclaim concerning Jesus. Peter does an exegesis, an explanation of Psalm 16 and Psalm 110, these two Psalms, to explain to people concerning Jesus. This shows how much Psalms played a part in the life of Jews. We often pray the Our Father, to say that we pray in the words that Jesus taught us and in the words that Jesus prayed. Well, the Psalms very much are prayers that Jesus prayed and Jesus continues to teach us. Every time you pray the Psalm, remember dear friends that Jesus is with you praying the very same prayers to his Father and our Father in heaven. With these sentiments, let us move into the psalm of the day. Today we have a very special psalm, 
Psalm 121. It is a psalm of protection. For me, it is a very special psalm. As I grew up as a child, I was taught this psalm by heart by my parents. And every time we set out on a journey, every time we went to a place outside our little town, we prayed Psalm 121, which we all knew by heart. And we were assured of God's protection, His presence and His guidance in our life. And every time we returned back safe, we knew that our God, who we prayed in Psalm 121, accompanied us and brought us back safe. This psalm is something that you too can learn by heart. A very short psalm of just eight verses. Let me read it for you before we start reflecting on it and then pray the psalm together. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. We have heard Psalm 121. Let us now reflect and see what the psalm speaks to us. This psalm is a psalm of safety, where the psalmist sets on a journey and he prays to God, asking for God's protection and prayers. This psalm is probably a song that is prayed by a group of people, not just one person. There is a psalmist and there is someone else who assures this person who's praying, the psalmist who's praying, by telling him of who God is. And so it is a group prayer, not just a one person's prayer. Now, this psalmist tells, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? Possibly they are on a journey. Possibly they are on a pilgrimage and they see tall hills, mountains right in front of them. The Jews had the practice of going to Mount Jerusalem every year to offer prayers. It could also be on one of these such journeys. Well, he sees this tall, rising, towering mountains in front of them, and it is there they break into this song. Have you been to hill stations? We Red Empress have our novitiate in Uti, Otakament, Kotigiri. And every time we go up and come down those mountains, we have these winding roads that carry us up to the mountains. And as the roads go winding, we see the mountains on either side of us, tall, strong rocks. And every time we see it, we break into prayer at how strong these mountains are, how towering these rocks are, that it can carry so many people, so many vehicles, and still stand unmoved. It has stand, stood so many thunders, so many rains, and still it could never be corroded. Such was the sentiments of these people who sang the Psalms. They have a strong mountain in front of them and they can compare it to their God who is strong as a mountain. In fact, people of the Old Testament 
or even people in general of old always prayed in mountains. The mountains and hills reminded them of God's presence. Abraham goes up a mountain to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. For Jews, mountains were places where they encountered God. Moses went up Mount Sinai, where he got his tablets, his commandments. We hear of Mount Horeb, where Moses would go to pray. There is Mount Carmel, where Elijah used to pray. Jerusalem itself was a mountain where the Jews had their holy temple. We have, even the Samaritans had their mountains. They had Gerazim as their mountain. We have Teman and Paran as other mountains. Jesus takes his inner circle, Peter, James and John, and they go up Mount Tabor to pray. And there they hear God speak to them, Behold my beloved son. Mountains are very special. And here the psalmist, on his way, looks up at mountains and says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? From where will my help come? And he says, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He is reminded that God is our creator. It simply means God is in control of our lives. Why do you worry when God, who is your creator, who is the controller of heaven and earth, is there with you? We hear the psalmist tell again, the heavens proclaim the glory of God and the earth tells forth his marvelous deeds. And that is where the psalmist holds it so dear to his heart. Now comes the role of the people who are with him, who assure the psalmist saying, Now you are praying to this God, he will not let your foot be moved. For he who keeps you does not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Slumber and sleep are actions of human beings. We have a God who is more than a human being. He is God. He is supreme. He does not need sleep as we need. He is always awake, watchful, looking at you and me. Therefore, as you look up to your mountains, be glad and rejoice. In this whole prayer, we see a very positive body language. Bowing down before God implies or indicates a kind of discouragement, a kind of uh, reverence, a fear, might be a prayer of penance because of some mistake that we have done, we ask God sorry. But here the psalmist looks up to heavens. It shows hopefulness. It suggests that he is so positive of God's presence in his life. And in that positivity, we too join in praying as the psalmist goes on. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. We have a God who keeps us. Jesus presents himself as this God who keeps. He presents himself as the gatekeeper, as the shepherd, and we his flock. That is another psalm where the psalmist himself would present the Lord as shepherd and we as his flock. It simply reminds us that we have a God who shelters us, who protects us, who keeps us close to his arms, who gathers us. And that is, again, assurance that is given by the people who pray along with the psalmist. The Lord is your shade and your right hand. When you have a shade, you are protected from thunder and lightning. When you have a shade, you're protected from the attack of animals, of wild beasts. It reminds that we have protection when God is there at our right hand. Right hand in the Bible also suggests the presence of the Holy Spirit. Finger of God's right hand always referred 
to Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. It was one of the many images like fire, like water that was used for the Spirit of God. So it reminds us that the Spirit of God comes to us as a shade when we call upon God's name. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. It gives two polarities, the sun and the moon, the day and the night. Whatever be the situation, we have protection. This would immediately, immediately remind the Jews of their journey through the wilderness from Egypt to Israel, from slavery to freedom, that as they walked through the land, they had a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day to protect them. And that was a very strong presence of God, of Yahweh walking with them. It simply meant that God was always with you 24-7 to protect you. And that is what this psalmist assures to this psalm. Verse 7, the Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. God protects us from evil. This is also the prayer of Jesus for his disciples. As he prays, we see this in John chapter 17, verses 11 and again verses 15, when Jesus prays to the Father for his disciples. He says, Father, I pray that you keep them that you protect these, my disciples, from evil. A prayer for protection. This psalmist again prays for protection. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in. Again, we see these two polarities, the twin polarities. Whether you go out or you come in, whether you set out on a journey or you return back to the safety of your homes, you are assured of God's presence and protection from this time on and forevermore, from the beginning to the end, for God being the Alpha and the Omega, the start and the end, the one with, without a beginning or an end, who constantly gives us protection. What a psalm of assurance for us especially who are going through troubled times. I invite you, as I read the psalm once again slowly to reflectively play, pray the psalm and then we shall spend a few moments in silence as we reflect over the psalm. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Let us pray with the psalm. We too lift up our eyes to you, O God. Up to the hills, up to heavens, to you who are a stronghold, our refuge, God our rock, who is steadfast. From where shall come my help? Lord, at this time of pandemic, at this time of a very crucial situation, at a time when we all go through struggles in our lives. 
financial struggles, material struggles, struggles due to health, due to unavailability of safety, of health resources, of hospitals and beds. We have no one but you, Lord, and so we cry to you. We lift up our eyes to you and we cry for help. Our help comes from you, Lord. You are the creator of heaven and earth. You created heavens. You created earth. You created me, the world around me, everything that is around. The creation breaks forth into song of your beauty, of the works of your hands. And so I turn to you, O Lord. This evening, as the sun sets down, we turn to you for your constant help and support. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. We assure one another that because you are there, our foot shall not be moved. Anyone can slip and fall. Any creation can slip and fall. But with you who are there, who does not slumber out of love for us, immense love for us, with watchful eyes, Lord, you glance into us. Your loving eyes are always turned to your faithful loved ones. Such a deep assurance at a time when we need you the most. The Lord is your keeper. And therefore, Lord, we, as your lambs, rest at your feet. Keep us. Protect us. Keep us close to you. At times when we feel weak and frail and broken, keep us on your shoulders where we will feel assured, strong, where you lift us. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. Lord, we need your shade. We need your protection. We need your help. Both during the day, when the sun threatens to smite us, and at night, it is your presence that shall walk with us, that shall march with us. Lord, keep us from all evil. Guard our life. Keep us from temptation. Keep us from falling into the hands of the evil one. These days, keep us from the evil of sickness. Keep us from the evil of despair. Keep us from everything that turns us away from you, Lord. Keep our going out and our coming in. We have a protection protocol. Every time we go out, Lord, people remind us to sanitize our hands, to wear our masks, to wear personal protective equipments. Along with that, we pray for your protection, Lord. For without you, all that we can use are just frail creations, the works of human hands. But you, our creator, can protect us as we go out and come in for our little daily chores, to win bread for the family as we go out on the daily errands that has to keep our life going. We pray for your protection, your safety, your help. We pray very specially for the leaders in the family, for daddies who go out for work. No other go, Lord. We pray for your special protection. 
We pray for us when we go out to shops, when we go out on so many things, that you may protect us. We pray for those on the frontiers, the front lines, our medical staff, doctors, our defense personnel, our police, and national leaders, so many of them who risk their lives, who have to keep businesses going for our livelihood, for farmers who have to step into the fields so that next year we will have food, if not for which we would have starvation. We pray for so many who are migrating, Lord, migrants who pose their lives at risk. We pray for protection on them. We pray for those of our family members who are abroad, stuck, unable to return home, for your protection on them. For children who study, who stay in hostels or in boardings, for your protection on them. We pray for those of us who plan travels, who have applied for passes, who have booked tickets, are in a great dilemma in gripping fear that you may protect us. For those of us who start a journey, who set on a journey, for your protection. For those of us who are going through a long time struggle, on a life's journey of struggle, for your protection. For those of us and our family members, our near and dear ones who are sick, perhaps who have given a test for this COVID, Perhaps those even who have been positive and are going through a very difficult struggle right now. Who else but you, Lord, can save? Well, we have the assurance by the psalmist that you will protect us, Lord. You are our God. And therefore, we pray together Save us, Lord. Protect us, Lord, now and always. Amen. Dear friends, we read a psalm which is just eight verses. A very small psalm, easy to memorize. Six out of these eight verses remind us that we have a God who protects us. Both at day and at night, both in going out and in coming in. Let us pray the psalm always in our families, in our lives. Well, this psalm speaks of God of the mountains. There are times when our prayers are not answered. There are times when we failed to experience protection. Remember, he is God also of the valleys. He is God also of the dark times. Let us not lose hope. Let us hold on to him. And one day, we will experience him in all eternity. Let me say the blessing for you and your family as we close this evening prayer. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Good night and God bless you. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Lift up the banner, let the anthem ring to Christ our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God.